What is good guys, today I have an awesome treat for you. We're gonna put to rest the final, like the big debate about eBay parts, eBay coilovers more specifically. Obviously there are some things on eBay that you probably shouldn't buy to put in your car, um, but coilovers is definitely one that everyone always wants to know. Can I get a set of $300 coilovers that will actually one, handle good, two, not give me a sore ass when I'm driving down the road, and three, can I throw them in a track car and have some fun? Like, can you build a budget car with these? So let's put that to rest. Let's answer that question today um, with this 1989 Mazda MX-5 or Miata, wherever you are from in the world. If you're in Japan, they call it a Roadster. In the US, they call it a Miata. And here in Australia, we call them an MX-5. So anyways, this car belongs to uh, my friend here who's an amazing hairdresser. Actually, he's my mechanic. <laughs> But yeah, we're gonna throw them in, see how they go. All right, so here are the coilovers that we've gone with. Now, I'm sure you know this brand, Max Peating Rods. They're everywhere on eBay. And just, just looking at these out of the box, like, first of all, they packaged these so good. So they're not damaged whatsoever. The box itself is just a regular brown box. So you're not gonna have any issues with people knowing what they are, like dodgy careers and flogging them. Um, but just looking at them out of the box, the quality of them looks really good. The bushings down here, they're not normal rubber. That looks like polyurethane there. Um, up in the top here, it looks like they have a spherical bearing. They're like a, a proper pillow ball. They don't have just a normal rubber mount there. And if you do know about a lot of these cheap coilovers, just put a rubber mount up in here and they wear out so quick. Um, but yeah, just like looking at the quality of everything, the collars are nice and thick. Um, these rear, uh, the parts that actually, you know, the lower lower adjustable part, that's nice and thick. It's not like a thin alloy. It looks like it's steel. Everything about this so far out of the box looks awesome. You get your adjustable C-spanners, your little Allen key there for adjusting your damper. So this was a, this full kit was about $350 US and it's 24 levels of dampening plus um, uh, height adjustability. So obviously we can adjust it from the, the bottom here, but like comes with your warranty comes with uh, a little instruction booklet and pretty much just everything you need to bolt them in and go, I guess. I'm really impressed actually. I was expecting for $350 US something that looked a lot more tacky, but these look pretty decent. Good job. Okay, so currently the car does sit really low and it doesn't have coilovers. It has factory struts with King lowered springs. These guys, King springs. Now, typically what happens is a lot of guys, they just put the lowered springs in and don't change the shocks. You're supposed to put a little bit of a stiffer shock in there uh, to eliminate body roll. But right now the car feels super bad through cornering. It feels like it needs strut bracing because it just wants to roll and twist kind of feels but uh, the car does have strut braces. So it's most likely that he's just got those old factory struts in there, never changed them when the previous owner put those uh, lowered king springs in. So we're hoping to eliminate all of those issues. Uh, the coilovers are gonna definitely help how this thing feels. And then Ben could even take it to the track and have a bit of fun on a Friday night drift session. But anyways, what I did wanna say was like, obviously we've looked at these out of the box and the quality of them does look good but then putting them in the car and seeing them like and feeling the difference, whether or not they feel like a solid coilover, whether or not they, uh, you know, handle well in corners and stuff like that, it's gonna be a different story. Just looking at them on the floor right now, they look great. And once we put them in the car, it could be a different story. So let's find out. We're gonna throw you on the time-lapse, throw in these coilovers, and then we'll see how they go. That is what you do with your stock suspension when you're done with it. <laughs> uh, so I was taking a look at the stock suspension we pulled out of the front. And I realized that something was up because if you look at here, this is, this is what the genuine uh, King Springs, like the lowered King Springs look like. So the rear is good, but the front is just weird, man. So look at the distance between the coils on this spring. It's about an inch. Look at the distance on the coils on this one. It's about two, three inches in some places. And there's evidence of a chop up here. Someone's cut this. So the previous owner, not only did he put chop, like choppy springs, but he only chopped one side and the whole car was lopsided. <laughs> like looking at the measurements here, there's a good like 10 millimeters. So a good cent like centimeter or so that the car was lopsided, which explains why your car, Benny, was handling so bad through corners. 
<laughs> so there you go, folks. When you buy a car off the internet, sight unseen. Um, probably a good idea to check your uh, suspension. I can't get over that. One side chopped, the other side normal. <laughs> Okay, so we're setting the height at the moment and the fronts are, are maxed out low. We've actually maxed out the rear and the front um, as low as the coilovers will let us adjust them, which is just by adjusting them as per the instructions via this lower collar here. Now, this is bottomed out, so it's actually like all the way around down to the bottom. And uh, you can see there's still a fair bit of space there that we would like to go, but we can't. And the biggest issue is the front looks great, you know, perfect. But the rear is like monster truck status. Like, it's almost like stock. Like I can, I can fit, like, look at all that wheel gap. So it's not gonna be level. So I think what I'd like to see happen with these coilovers is if max peating rods, are, I'd like to see them fix that so that maybe the, the tube's a little bit shorter so you can make the car sit lower because yeah, it's just way too high for, um, I guess the rear of the Miatas, I mean, the front are maxed out as well, all the way to the bottom. And they, they look pretty good, right? Respectively, it's pretty nicely tucked. Um, but the rears here, man, like, I just, I can't get over how much space there is, like, on the top of the wheel. So it's, it's uneven, totally. So to even this out, um, we're gonna uh, probably have to raise the front a bit. Uh, okay, so. We're getting in the car now, getting ready to take the car for like a test drive and see how the coilovers handle. Uh, but before we did, I made sure I put the Max Speeding Rods uh, sticker on the dash there, made it official. So a big thank you to Max Speeding Rods for these coilovers. And uh, time to take this thing for a test drive and see how she goes, eh? with how the rear feels. Okay, so the coilovers have completely shocked me. I did not expect them to feel that good. And Ben, you were the one that was driving. How did it feel compared to what you previously had in there? Yeah, is, um, I guess to start with, I had a lot of problems with understeering, naturally with the 50-50 weight distribution yeah, yeah, in the yeah. Miata. Um, so that definitely started to favor oversteer a lot more. We were dealing with wet weather, but yeah. as far as once it broke traction as well, we did not have any tank slap issues, didn't have any yeah. weight distribution issues. Yeah. Um, it was actually quite a predictable car to steer, so I'll give give them that. That was quite yeah. good. Yeah, and I mean, like the the main issue we've just had is Ben loves a little bit of the low stancy stuff. So, well, especially in that car. So we were a bit bummed that we couldn't get the coilovers fully like maxed out even lower. But in all honesty, it doesn't look that bad. Change your wheel combo and stuff like that. So it should be all right. But as a budget like coilover, would you recommend this to someone who was just like building a budget car? didn't have a bunch of money, worked at like McDonald's kind of thing to just slap in and be able to start having some fun with motorsport. I definitely think um, as an entry level, it is, is, is a good place to start. Um, yep. Like anything, you'd need the R&D to know the reliability yeah. of ripple strips at a couple hundred K and stuff. So I don't yeah, want to yeah, recommend yeah. them for that sort of stuff until I was to risk that myself. But, yeah. um, for dailying or for entry track level stuff or just for some time attack stuff, I think they'll be a very um, capable little coil. Yeah, yeah. Price. Yeah, like I was, in all honesty, like the way that it felt when you were, you know, getting some oversteer and having a bit of fun, it was just, it didn't have any body roll. It didn't like bite in and kind of like tip in or anything. It was just super smooth and like, it felt like the car was planted and gripped and it just didn't have any of that roll that I was expecting. So I think for a budget like coilover, I think they're worth it, especially if you've only got like 350 to spend on <laughs> coilovers. Yeah. You can't fault the, the price. No, you can't fault that price. No. <laughs> All right, so that was a bit of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of little bit of different content. For me, this this video was very deja vu and it reminded me of a whole bunch of like old Hagger garage videos and just kind of belt 
like brought back those kind of like feelings and fun when I was uh, a little bit younger watching their content. You know, the whole Rice Miata stuff as well. And yeah. Anyways, um, I'm just, I'm still gobsmacked actually on just how well the car felt. Like it literally felt like an S13 when, uh, when Ben was driving it and you know, having a bit of fun and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, thanks heaps for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe. Check out all my social media down in the description. The Discord community is going well and pumping. It's great seeing you all hanging out there and sharing each other's builds and getting advice and talking about stuff. Also check out my Instagram, semit01. And I'll catch you on the next video. Jamatane.